Hey gang, welcome to your fifth Django tutorial and in this video we'll take a look at Django apps. Alright then, so in the last tutorial what we did was create this views.py file inside the root app directory, this Django Nautic directory. And remember, Django created this root app for us when it started the project. And we're going to talk about apps in a second, don't worry about that. But Inside this views.py file, what we did was control what happened when someone came to a specific URL, and then we sent back a template, which was in this templates directory, which was inside the root of the entire project, this Django Nautic folder at the top, okay? Now, the way we've done things here, by creating this views file inside here, this root app, and this templates folder inside the root of the project, this is generally not the Django way of doing things. We tend to instead create separate apps or separate sections of our websites. Now, this is okay to teach you because I wanted to show you the basics of how URLs and views work together without overwhelming you with apps and things like that. But now we know the basics, what I'd like to do is move on and do things the more Django way. So create different apps for different parts of our application. So to better explain what apps are in Django, I created this nifty little diagram, which I'm pretty proud of. And uh, it shows the kind of structure or desired structure of our Django project. So when we created a Django project, it created the root folder right here, okay, which was Django Nautic. And then inside that, it also created another Django Nautic folder, which is our first app, our main app for the project, right? And inside here, what we did, we manipulated the URLs, we created URLs in here, and we also created a views file, right? And we controlled what we sent back to the user inside this app right here. Now, generally, when we're creating a Django project, what we do is split up our application into separate mini apps, if you like, okay? So each app inside the project is gonna control a certain aspect or section of the whole web application. For example, we've got a blog going on here, right? We wanna create a blog. Now, it makes sense to me that we have an articles app, which is gonna control the different articles, the blog posts, if you like, okay? And inside this articles app folder, we're gonna have a urls.py file, much like we did over here. We're also going to have a views file, and we're going to have a templates folder. And these views, URLs, and templates are only going to be for this particular app, right? Same if we want some kind of user accounts. We're going to have an accounts app, and that's going to have a URLs file, a views file, and a templates folder with different templates inside it for things like a login screen, a sign up screen, or different things to do with accounts, right? So we're modularizing our whole project here into separate little apps instead of just doing everything inside this root main Django Nautic app like we did in the last tutorial. We don't want to create um, a views file in here and control what we send to a user here, right? We can still put base URLs in here and we'll see that as we go through the tutorial. But for the most part, what we're going to do is split up our project into separate little apps for different sections of our website. Make sense? Okay then, so now you've got your head around what apps actually are. Let's go ahead and create an app for the article section of our website. So to do this, what you want to do is navigate inside your terminal to the root project directory, which is the top level Django Nautic folder here, right? We want to create a new app, which is going to sit inside this folder. And the way we do that is by saying Python, because we're running a Python file, and we're going to use the manage.py file again, told you we'd be using this quite a lot. Then we're gonna use a command called start app, and then we give this app a name. I'm gonna call it articles. And generally we pluralize our app names. You don't have to, it's just a bit of a standard. So this start app command coming from manage.py is gonna go ahead and create a directory inside here called articles. It's gonna create that app folder for us, okay? And you can see it pop up right now. And inside here we have another folder called migrations and a load of files. Now, the migrations folder will come to later. I don't want to overwhelm you with that just yet. This init.py is the same as inside here. It's just saying, hey, this is a module. Then we have an admin.py. Again, we'll come to that later. Apps.py later, models.py later. Don't worry about most of this for now. But we can see at the bottom that we have a views.py file inside this folder already. So that's saying to me, look, Python, or rather Django, wants you to create views inside individual apps. And that's what we're going to do. And helpfully, it's already imported the render function, which we're going to need to render templates, right? 
The one thing it doesn't have in here is a URLs file. So let's create that because we want to keep our URLs files separate for each individual app. So we're controlling them in different sections and we don't get overwhelmed by just putting them all inside this thing right here. OK, makes sense to kind of modularize things as you're going along. So let's create a new file and call this URLs.py. And inside here, I'm just going to paste what we have inside this file for now. Cross that off, paste it in here because we still need these things. In fact, I'll get rid of admin. We don't need that because we're not setting up an admin URL, but we still do need this URL right here. And we do need to import the views from the current directory, which is this file right here. OK, so now we have this URLs file. We don't want to set up an about URL inside the articles app because that's not what the articles app is for. Instead, what we'll do is just set up an articles homepage, right? And we won't call it homepage. We'll call it something like article list or something like that, because the homepage of the articles, if you go to something like forward slash articles on a website, you'd expect just to see a list of articles, right? So this is the URL we're creating. It's going to be just forward slash, right? And we're going to show this function or rather via this function when a user goes to this. So let's save this and go over to our views file. And we need to create a function called, was it article list? Yes, it was article list. So we'll say def article underscore list. It takes in the request object. And in here, what do we want to do? Well, all we want to really do is render a template to the user, which is going to show a list of articles, right? So we now have to do that. We can say return and we're going to return a render of an article or, or of a template rather. And the first parameter is always the request object. And then the second parameter is going to be the template that we want to render. Now, we've not created this template yet. Where do we want to create it? Well, I'm not going to create it inside this root templates folder over here. I'm going to leave this for kind of global templates that we can use in every single app, right? What I'm going to do instead is create inside this articles app a new folder called templates. And we're going to keep all of the templates for this app inside this folder. Now, typically what we do is create a new folder inside here and it's going to be the same name as the app itself. So articles, you can see we have articles, then templates, then articles. And this is kind of namespacing the templates for this app, because if we didn't have this, and we had an app called, I don't know, home or index inside here. And we also had an app called home or index inside here or another app. Then Django would get confused about which one to render when you want to render the home page or the index. Right. So we're kind of namespacing the templates for the articles app right here. And inside here, we want to create a new uh, template. And I'm going to call this article underscore list dot HTML. All right. And this is going to be a really simple HTML page. Uh, we'll say articles for the title. And then inside here, we'll just do a H1 and it will say article list or something like that. OK, so let's save that. Now we have this template stored in this folder right here. What we want to do is render that template when this function is fired. Article list makes sense. So let's pass through that template. Now I said that we namespace things. This is where it comes in handy. So it's not just the article underscore list dot HTML thing we want to render. We want to render articles forward slash article list. So this articles refers to this folder right here, then article list. And that makes sense, right? So we're rendering this HTML template when this is fired right here. Now, the next thing we need to do, and we should have done this earlier, is that whenever we create a new app over here, we have to actually register that app inside the project, right? Otherwise, it's not going to work. So the way we do that is by going to the settings.py file. And if you go down here, you can see installed apps. Now, Django comes with some apps already installed, even though we can't see them over here. And one of them is for the admin section, authentication sessions, etc. Right. These are all things that are helping you out and we'll visit a couple of them later on. But we've just created an articles app, so we need to register that inside this settings file. So Django knows about it. And all we need to do is call articles like so. 
All right, so now this is registered inside the entire project. Django knows about it, so this app will work. So let's just review what we've done here. We've created this articles app, and inside we have the URLs file. And this is saying, okay, when someone goes to the root URL, because we've not specified something here, fire this function, article list, which is then rendering this template right here, which we just created inside here. Now, if we run this now, do you think it's gonna work? And I ask you that question because inside the URLs, we have this URL set up for the articles, but we also have the same URL set up for the homepage. So which one is gonna take precedence, right? Well, if we run the server, we'll find out. So I'll say python manage.py run server. So this is gonna spin up a local server for us so that we can visit this in a browser. And if I go to localhost uh, colon 8000, that's the port number, what am I gonna get? Well, I get the homepage. So how do I actually get the articles? Do I go to forward slash articles? Well, no, that's not gonna work. We get a 404 error. So what's going on here? How do we actually view this thing right here? Okay, how do we get to it? Well, what we have to do is register the article URLs inside the main URLs folder or file rather inside this root app. Okay, so it's dead simple to do. We need to create a URL here, which is gonna include the URLs from this file. Does that make sense? So this is dead simple to do. All we need to do is import, I'm gonna put a comma there, a function called include, right? And this is gonna be used to include URLs from other URL files. So I'm gonna place these underneath admin and we'll create a URL. And inside, first of all, there's gonna be a raw string that's the first parameter. And this is gonna be carrot, which means starts with, then it's gonna be articles, then forward slash. We're not gonna put a dollar sign on the end because we want other things to come after this later on, such as forward slash articles, forward slash, then the name of an article or an idea of an article, right? And what we're gonna do is whenever someone goes to forward slash articles, we're gonna include, which is this thing we just imported, the Art, uh, the URLs for the articles app. So we type in here as a string articles, which is the app name dot URLs. So Django knows now to look for these URLs inside the articles app and include them. So whenever someone goes to forward slash articles, then it's gonna look at these things right here and then place whatever's in here after that forward slash article. So for example, if I created another one here which was i don't know um about right doesn't make sense but then when we went to forward slash articles forward slash about then it would fire this thing right here does that make sense so forward slash articles now will come before every single url we place in here so we've registered those urls if you like or we've included them in the main url file all right so if we save this now, fingers crossed, this should work. If I go to forward slash articles, then we should get the articles template. And we don't because our server is not running some invalid syntax. And that is probably, let's just have a look over here because I've forgotten a comma. Yep, it is. So save that. And hopefully now, my friends, this will work. So forward slash articles, voila, we get the article list now. So. I know this might be a lot to take in when you first start out, but dead simply what we've done is created a new app. We've registered some URLs inside this app and some views and templates. Then what we've done is we've registered that app inside the settings folder or file, first of all, down here to make sure that everything works in Django and Django knows about that app. Once we did that, we included the app URLs, which are these things inside the main URLs right here. So that when someone goes to forward slash articles, then we include the article URLs, okay? So whatever comes after forward slash articles is registered here. Then we just hook it up the same way as normal. We hook it up to some kind of view function and that's gonna send back a template which is stored inside the app itself. And again, Django knows to look inside the templates folder because in one of the first lessons, we said in the settings file down here, 
that the templates directory is going to be templates. So it knows to look inside each app to look for that templates folder. OK, so there we go. That is Django apps in a nutshell. And we're going to learn more as we go along. So don't feel like you have to know everything about apps just now. We're going to be making more apps as we go along and working with these different URLs and views too.